I've just been outside and taken this uncompressed raw file on uh, the Nikon D800E and what I've then done is come inside and I've put the lens cap on and I've shot this black frame. Now what I'm actually going to do is do a series of three image overlays of these two actual files and I'm going to do them at different compression settings. So if I go to menu and I come to raw recording and you can see that I've got my compression turned off. In other words, I'm shooting uncompressed. So, first thing I'm going to do is come down to my retouch menu and I'm going to go to image overlay. And image number one, I'm going to select as being the shot I've just taken outside. And I'll click OK. Image number two, I'm going to select as the dark frame. I'm going to click OK, I'm going to come to Preview, I'm going to click OK to Overlay. And there we go, and click OK to Save. So, what I've actually now done is created a new RAW file. The very next thing I'm going to do is go back to my menu, and we are going to go to RAW Recording, and we're going to select Lossless Compressed, and select OK. I'm then going to come back down to my retouch menu, image overlay. And I'm going to select that original raw file. I'm now going to select the original dark frame. I'm then going to select overlay. And we'll click save. And now I've created yet another file from those two original raw files but now that's got lossless compression on it. So what we're going to do now is go back to menu and we will go back into our raw recording and we will go for compressed, which is Nikon speak for lossy compression. And we'll select OK. And then I'm going to come back to image overlay again select my original raw file and select the original dark frame there we go and go preview overlay and we'll click OK to save and then seeing as I do not want my camera permanently left in lossy compression recording I'm going to go back to my raw settings and I'm going to turn that off and jolly good right so what we'll do now is we'll import those three images into Lightroom and we'll have a look to see if we can see any differences between uncompressed lossless compressed and lossy compression so I'll see you inside Lightroom in a minute okay so we've got our three uh, camera created raw files here inside a Lightroom inside the develop module and as you can see there's no develop settings applied to any of these images at all they are direct off the camera with no Lightroom adjustments and first of all let me just explain why I've done this it is impossible to shoot um, consecutive raw files even at the same compression settings and have everything absolutely everything be identical between the two frames so the atomists um, that will be photon flux which is one thing that would cause it for the non atomists I suppose that would be fluctuations in field perturbation yes if you want to know what field perturbation is go and listen to my mate Ken Wheeler well, he's not my mate, but I do have a lot of respect for him. Uh, but yeah, Ken Weir with the angry photographer. And uh, you have a listen to some of Ken's rants about... Mm, yeah, <laughs> I'll leave it with you. But the other reason it's impossible to get perfectly identical uh, consecutive shots is EMR, or electromagnetic radiation, uh, caused by the sensor actually doing the exposure. 
uh, commonly referred to as fixed noise. And the thing about fixed noise is it is always in a different place. And um, that's why we shoot when we do astrophotography. Uh, that's why we shoot multiple dark frames because it's always in a di the noise, the EMR, the fixed noise is always in a different place in between frames. So merging this raw file three times with that same um, dark frame has actually sort of created an even playing field for the three images by which we can judge if there's any differences between the three various compression settings we've got available to us in this camera which is uncompressed, lossless compressed and lossy compressed and uh, so there we go that's why we've done the exercise and here we have the uncompressed uh, merge of the two frames and let's just check out the histogram and then move on to the image that is shot with or produced in camera with lossless compression and you can't see any difference can you not in the slightest the image isn't changing at all but look at the histogram the histogram is actually changing ever so slightly we can see a big chunk of cyan um, on the sort of about two-thirds of the way up the histogram along the histogram is actually moving and whoops a daisy we've gone to the wrong one is actually moving in between the uncompressed and the lossless compressed and that chunk of cyan if you look next to it it's green so what we're actually doing is we're creating a slight shift in the response curve of the green channel now you can ask yourself the question mm, is that important mm, 99 times out of 100 no it isn't of course it isn't but it is a shift nonetheless but if we go and look at lossy compression oh dear yeah now we are getting yet another quite severe movement there we go lossy compression or compressed Nick on white to call it so that's lossless compression that's lossy compression you can see a real big shift in the histogram and in the number of tones the actual height of the histogram all the individual peaks is actually illustrative of the number of tones of those particular densities that are being recorded in each of the three color channels and you can see Basically, the heights in uncompressed and lossless compressed are pretty much the same, but in lossy compression, the whole histogram is depressed ever so slightly. So, there you go. I mean, it's, is it a realistic exercise? Um, it just goes to prove a point, and it sort of may help explain to you why I always shoot in uncompressed raw I suppose it, it's not something that you can say applies evenly across the board to all your images um, or it's a fact might not apply evenly across the board to all your different types of images and I'm not saying it applies to all cameras although you've not really got an option on Canon cameras to actually prove this to yourself or disprove it to yourself because of Canon's steadfast refusal to give the owner operator of the camera the ability to record truly uncompressed RAW. Um, why would we want to record uncompressed RAW? Well, now I would have thought it was obvious really. Um, we want to make sure we are keeping every single little bit of data that we recorded and uh, its ratios, if you like, between the channels are not being altered in any way which they definitely are when we switch from uncompressed to compressed or lossless compressed because we've got that slight shift in the histogram on these particular images um, so uh, yeah I'm not saying that you should always shoot uncompressed raw 
what I mean? If I take my neck on D4, for instance, and have it in an uncompressed 14 bit raw, I can quite happily shoot 70 images at 10 frames a second, and I can clear that buffer to uh, a high quality XQD card in under 45 seconds. For me and the sort of work that I do, that's plenty fast enough. Um, some people might want to go for lossless compressed to uh, increase the number of frames they can shoot in a continuous burst. But this argument for, oh well, file sizes are smaller, and um, while we're at it, we might as well just go and look at the file sizes. If I pull up my finder and go to my desktop, and uh, here we go, we can see those three files created inside the camera uh, right here and is the uncompressed which is 76.5 meg the lossless compressed which is 43.1 meg and the lossy compressed which is 36.5 meg yeah so if you want to save space yeah fine fair enough but I really do think it's a bit silly to go out and buy the likes of say a Nikon D850 with a huge sensor producing huge raw files and then not want to keep every single little scrap of data that is captured by that sensor and keeping it in an unchanged state and people can say what they like about lossless compression in my experience it does change the raw file a little bit a little bit in most cases overall in the image it might not be noticeable but i just don't want to take the chance i'm not smart enough or clever enough to understand the mechanics of how this compression works and really and truly i don't think the likes of nikon are ever going to divulge truly the way it does work so uh, everybody's exercising some degree of guesswork over it but you know i mean it's there there is a little tiny bit of difference sometimes between uncompressed and lossless compressed so there you go just thought i'd explain that to you show you the findings so you can make your own mind up okay see you soon